Welcome to Chuck Builds. Today we're going to be talking about Node Red and how to install it into Home Assistant. Node Red is a flow based automation program, and I personally prefer it to the built in automations inside of Home Assistant. Something about being able to see the flow and logic is really helpful for me for making complex automations and troubleshooting existing ones. The existing Home Assistant automation platform is not bad. I'm a visual person, so using this for some automations helps, but in general, I like to see it. Um, on my personal home assistant, I have a bunch of flows that I can see the progress and things that are probably not best practices, scratch that. I know they're not best practices, um, repeating the same type of device and changed output. There's ways to programmatically do it, I'm going to preface this and say I am not an expert at Node Red. That being said, I do think this is worth your time to learn. Um, learn how to use it. You don't have to be an expert, but I've been able to do more with this than I would have been able to do with this. Before we dive in, I'm not an expert at Node Red. There's tons of people online that know a lot more than I do. If you have a automation that you need help with, go to the forums, go to Reddit, um, go somewhere else. I will not be able to help you troubleshoot your node red flows very well, but it's really useful. I really do prefer it over this type of automation and it's just another option. You can use both. You can mix and match. You can use all of one, all of the other. You can skip this video entirely, but my next videos will be showing you some of my node red flows for more advanced automations or what I would consider advanced, what some people probably would not. But if you're watching this video, it might be advanced for you too. And I think it's helpful to see everything that's going on. Before we cover the installation, you should know that there are many options for installation. You could run Node-RED separately on a Docker container anywhere, um, on a Raspberry Pi, in a VM, wherever, and then call into that into Home Assistant. But for the purposes of this video, we'll be installing it inside of Home Assistant operating system. That's what I've been sticking to for all my other videos. I like having my add-ons in one place and I like that my backups capture my automations at the same time. You can separate it if you need to, but I would recommend doing it inside of Home Assistant operating system if you can. To install Node-RED, we'll go into Home Assistant, Settings, Add-ons, and then the Add-on Store. And we can search for it here. It should be included with the Home Assistant community add-ons, not require an additional repository. So it should pop right up and we'll click install. Before we launch it, we'll go to configuration and we need to create a credential secret. So I've got one that I pre-made in my Bitwarden wallet. And then I'm also going to turn off SSL just because I don't have a certificate handy for that. I'll click save info and start. And our service is now running and I'm going to go ahead and click watchdog, which will restart the add on if it crashes. So just make sure that your automations never not work. If there's a restart or anything, um, auto update, just not worry about it. And then show in sidebar because we'll be accessing it often. So we'll go to the web UI. Now that we're inside of Node-RED, we are going to create our first flow. Before we really dive into that, I want to just kind of describe what we have going on. When you get support online, it's going to help to use the right terminology. So these things in the left here are called nodes. And these nodes are kind of your tie-in to a function, a service, or a physical item like a motion sensor. You would um, check on this via these Home Assistant nodes. The uh, probably two most important ones or nodes that you'll be using inside of Node-RED is going to be the inject and the debug. And so you just click and drag these nodes over to create them. You can select them and press delete to get rid of them. And these little blue dots are indicating that there's a change that has not been saved. The way that you save is you go up here to deploy and just click deploy. And we got a little warning that there's unused nodes here, but that's fine. So now that the blue dots are gone, if I were to close out of Node-RED by going to the overview and then coming back inside of Node-RED and let it start up again, they're still there. But if I didn't click deploy, they wouldn't still be there. 
So if I were to make this connection, not deploy it, go away and come back, it's not saved. So you need to make a habit of just hitting that deploy button all the time, every change you make. Now I'll talk about these two nodes that we have here, the timestamp node and the debug node and why I think they're probably the most important nodes that you'll be using. The debug node is how you know what's going on. We're gonna go up to this little debug option right here, this little bug, and that will output anything going into a debug node with the label debug one. The timestamp node, why that's important, is when I click this little button here, it is going to like inject or start the flow process manually. Whereas if I were to do something like a state node, when motion is detected, then send me a message. I don't want to have to get up and go trigger that motion detection each time to make sure that it's doing every A, B, C, and D that I want it to do. I hope that makes sense. Maybe it'll help if we see it. Uh, so we're just going to click this button right here. We're going to inject timestamp and we get to see here on the right, our node debug one inside of flow one gave us a payload number, which is a date time format. And we can click on it to see all the different formatting options. So I clicked that just now. I can click it a bunch of times and it pops up really fast. Um, so that's really important to know how to use this and see what you're expecting to get out of your flow versus what is actually being put into the system. For an example, inside of Home Assistant, using our Home Assistant entities, I'll be using the Zigbee motion sensor that I set up in a previous video, and I'll also be using the Tasmoda smart plug that we set up in a previous video. Um, so it's good to know the names of them, make sure they're on and working before you get into Node Red. And the first thing I'll do is grab an event state node, and we'll just rename this to motion sensor. And then for the entities, this will list every entity in your Home Assistant uh, server. So you could scroll through it, but if you have a lot, get in the habit of searching a keyword such as motion. And then we can see we have Chuck Builds motion sensor, the battery, motion, temperature, illuminance, or power outage. We're gonna be using motion, and we can also see occupancy as the actual entity. And this is a binary sensor, so it'll be a yes or a no, um, or some variation of that. And we'll just go ahead and click done. And we can move our debug here, because we'll be using this. And let's get rid of this timestamp and draw a new connection between the two. And then click deploy. And let's go over to our debug menu. And I wanna see if I move the motion sensor if it detects, it might have already been saying that the room was occupied. So I'll turn it away from me and we'll see if that <laughs> gives us an unoccupied reading here shortly. So while we're waiting on that to turn over, and, and this is a prime example of why timestamp would be useful, we can work on the rest of our automation. So while we're waiting on our motion sensor to clear out, we'll work on the rest of the automation and that will be a call service, which I like to think about as asking Home Assistant to do something or hitting a, a button on the app on your phone or in the web view. Um, call service is really anything that you are doing and then call state is like reading. Um, so there's an action and then there's an observation and this call service is the action. So we will click on this and call this turn on plug. Uh, we're gonna need a domain and this is a switch. So we will get the switch domain the service options we have available to us are toggle, off, or on. We'll do toggle. Um, area is just where this is. I don't think I actually set that, so I'll skip that. Device can help if you have a ton of entities, but not that many devices. And then entity is what we're specifically calling. So we will type in Chuck, because I believe it is called Chuck Builds Tasmoda S31. And we'll click done and deploy, so deploy is like your save, and then I'll click on this timestamp, and the plug turned on, and then it turned off, because we used a toggle here. If we were to switch it to just on, it, so that error was, I think I went too quick from deploy to um, calling the service for turn on plug, 
but when you click the timestamp, it's already on, so it stays on. I'm gonna set this to toggle though. Deploy to save, and then I'm going to also put our motion sensor on this and then make sure our debug is on. And then click deploy. And so I'm gonna reach from a motion sensor and it's gonna detect motion and then a person is here. And so we can see here the motion sensor detected my motion, uh, turned on, the debug read that the message we received was on, and then the plug was also toggled at the same time. That's a very simple flow. This would have been easy to do in a automation and home assistant, but these visual aspects of it really helped me out and being able to see what's going on here helps me as well. So I recorded some advanced example flows, but I think I'm gonna leave them out of this video. We're at the 10 minute mark and it's gonna be another eight to get through a kind of dumb practice flow that I just threw together and my pacing was all off. Um, so I'm gonna try again on that in a future video and thought I'd just call it here, but it's an abrupt ending. Um, hopefully you've installed Node-RED, you've made a little test flow with me, seeing how to place a node and how they interact and how to debug. Um, there's tons of examples online I'd encourage you to check out and I plan on covering quite a few more automations on my channel. Thanks for watching.